The roar and the rut, it seemed to have really, really died down when we got here. Uh, but we had a couple of cold days and it just really kicked it back in. So we, we get, get the truck parked and he wants to go out towards this meadow and we're working our way there and, and we can hardly even get to where he wants to sit up because we just have stag roaring and running back and forth. Uh, we hear a huge fight happen. Um, so as we're trying to get to the meadow, we want to, one of the shooters that we had spotted from far away, we see him just run, uh, just barreling across the field, just roaring. You know, it's such a cool sight. So Lobo gets us set up on this nice little spot on the meadow and the action all stops there and we can hear it all kind of going on down on the next meadow. So we sit there for about 20 minutes and, and Lobo says, all right, we need to go down there. As soon as we start to head down there, of course, they, they all start running back and we kind of get caught in no man's land. So we're down in this little ditch. Before we can even get set up, these two stag, one runs right by us and, and a little bit of an older one, but still real young. He comes and he walks about 15 yards from us and stops right there. So we're all frozen and he spots us, stares at us for a little bit and starts taking off there. This stag sees it and he starts running across. So now I say, oh, it's perfect. 100 yard shot, I, I lay down, get ready to shoot. And instead of him walking in front of me broadside, he turns and runs straight at us. When he finally stops, he's 10, 15 yards away. And in my scope, it's just shoulder and neck. And crazy. I mean, if he had to come much further, he would have run over us. It was a great morning. We had roars going 
back and forth. I mean, the stag were, it was everything that you wanted out of an Argentina stag hunt. Um, one of the most exciting hunts I've ever, I mean, it was almost so chaotic. We just had trouble getting set up, but uh, it was a lot of fun. When, when I shot the sun? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I can hardly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now the fun part, getting him out of here. That was, that was crazy. We, you know, it's the tail end of the roar, but um, they didn't know that today. It was, it was almost, it, it was almost too chaotic to actually get set up on them. And we had a couple of big guys roaring up here and then down here and running back and forth and trying to herd up, you know, everything to breed. And we moved down to go after them and all of a sudden, here they come running back up to the, the, the guy roaring on the, the ridge and we just really didn't have much of a choice. We just sat down and this guy just came charging right at us. I think he thought we were trying to, I think he thought we were a stag and trying to get his ladies, but. That was, that was up close and personal. A lot of people ask about what we do with the meat. Um, and unfortunately, due to USDA regulations, we aren't allowed to bring meat back into the United States. So, uh, Parque Diana did a great job of, we're generally eating all the stag meat from the group prior. Um, you know, every night we've got salamis and smoked venison and oh, just all kinds of great little meat treats. But they asked, hey, do you want to, you know, eat this stag? So we cut the back straps out and we hung the quarters for them to use for the, the next group. But the chef here, uh, he was great. He took the back straps and trimmed them and got all the silver skin off. Stag meat is very similar to elk, but it's, it's very, it's almost between whitetail and, and elk. Um, it's got a little bit more fat in it, but very, very good. He made an excellent meal that we all loved and we got to experience that meat the same night of the hunt you know and brought that meat straight from the uh, the field to the table it was just a great experience <laughs>